Hey, it's Vizo, and I love Yu-Gi-Oh! My caveman brain can't get enough of this shiny plastic cardboard. As a kid, I collected so many cards that now... I have multiple binders filled with them. I have to admit though, I didn't play too much Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was younger. I was alone and had no friends who were interested. So what if I didn't know the rules? I had a passion for it, damn it! If only there was a way to play the card game without playing the card game! God, you are real. Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monster Coliseum is a spin-off of the typical card game. Instead of cards containing monsters, all the monsters are hidden away inside eggs waiting to be hatched. Not really a lot of people know about this, since it was a 12-episode spin-off that didn't even broadcast in Japan. It completely bombed. So this is getting up there in obscurity. Some speculate that this game was made because of Capsule Monster Chest, which showed up in the manga for two chapters. Well, there is no official correlation to each other. How can you not notice that they look pretty much identical? At the end of the day, this is a 3D board game at its finest. There are quite a few mechanics that make it even more special compared to other strategy games. You first have to start by choosing a symbol, a piece that will represent you and your kingdom. You have to defend this piece with your life, for if it were to vanish, MIND CRUSH! <laughs> Symbols also represent your strength and what bonuses you can provide for your monsters. So if you were to go dark like me, you can bet. Karibo, Dark Magician, and the goddamn pieces of Exodia will be beefy as all hell! Sweet! So you're telling me I can make an army of all dark monsters. <laughs> Do you wanna die? Well then listen up, Buttercup. There's a little thing called strength and weaknesses in this game. While you can use any monster, the downside to using all of one type is that you're left wide open. For you see, light is strong against dark, but dark consumes the earth. Wait, how does dark consume the earth? <laughs> this is life or death we're talking about here. <clears throat> fire bursts the wood, but water melts fire to nothing. In doing so, the earth crushes thunder with a mighty fist, while wood blocks the wind, preventing it from transcending to the gods above. However, wind annihilates water, leaving nothing but dust. And finally, we have to take into account thunder, who can demolish light in the blink of an eye. You shall die. I am the storm that is a pro. at the picture. It's pretty simple when you get down to it. This is a little thing called strategy. It's best if you learn while you can. If you wish to one day be Yugi, that is. Wait, you think I could beat the king of games? <laughs> oh, you see, young sapling, having a variety of monsters will keep all your bases covered in the long haul. But before we get to the game, you must understand that your symbol is like your own baby ape. You have to nurture and cherish it after every game. Give it praise, take it out for walks in the park. In time, it'll get XP, which will help it grow. In doing so, it'll make way for even stronger monsters. When you level up, you have three options to choose from. AP, Effect Strength, and PP. Hey, pay attention. The stronger a monster is, the higher its cost. Use AP for moving, attacking, and hatching your creatures. If you want a shit ton of OP monsters on your team like Black Luster Soldier or Blue Eyes White Dragon, you will need a ton of AP. However, on the other hand, Effect Strength is all about enhancing your symbol's power. If you were a dark attribute, all your dark monsters would increase basically buffing everyone essentially injecting your army with stat-boosting drugs, making it so no one can even touch you. Remember, it's not cheating unless you get caught. Then we have PP, the stupid upgrade. If you upgrade this, you're basically admitting defeat. Power points represent your symbol's health, how many hits you can take before you die. To me, this sounds like you plan on getting hit. Why get hit when you can just kill the enemy? They're right there! Now are you going to be a coward or the goddamn king of games that you are? They say the best offense is a good defense. But don't be a sheep and listen to them! Get out there and fight! This is a war! Oh, this game may seem pretty complicated. It's actually pretty straightforward. Before every game, you choose a card to see who goes first and which side you start on. Then you pick what monsters you want. 
Each monster has MP, monster points, if you will. You only have a select amount of monsters depending on the stage, which makes deciding who you bring in a real challenge. If a monster costs a lot like Dark Magician Girl or Summon Skull, you could end up going to battle with fewer monsters than your opponent. While they could have the number games on you, you'd have the power. However, they could easily send in multiple monsters ganging up on your big guys. These are definitely some hard choices. You could also go the cost effective way, choosing the low cost monster so that you can have a full team, but you lose out on those powerhouses that you love. Alright, before I geek out anymore, you gotta appreciate the simple complexity of opening moments like these. Like any good board game, they provide the rules and a sandbox to play in. There's a lot of ways on how to command your army, but at the end of the day, it's up to your own discretion. You could easily go through the whole game with nothing but Karibos if you wanted to. All you have to remember is, the stronger the monster, the higher the cost. This game also provides a variety of maps that have a hidden effect on them. They can give bonuses to a certain attribute or even change the stage into an entirely different terrain, which could wildly turn the tables of a match. It really feels like you're playing around in a diorama, moving your troops around, positioning them just the way you like it. Wait a moment. This is just chess! It's Fire Emblem with extra steps! Okay, look, maybe my love for Fire Emblem has sprouted from this little sapling here. But god damn, this is such a great beginner-friendly strategy game. The attention to detail in this game is surprisingly really in-depth. There are 200 cards that make an appearance. Well, this seems small in the grand scheme of things, since there's thousands nowadays. All the monsters in this game have been made into little miniatures that represents them on the board. Not only that, but they were given fight animations, special effects, evolutions, and fusion summons that are hidden away! The funny thing about these is that they don't even tell you about them anywhere in the game until you randomly run into it and a text box appears. There's no tutorial or nothing. I've played this game multiple times now and only found out about fusion summoning recently. I can imagine discovering this as a little kid and just being blown away. It would have started a great hunt to try and recreate my favorite monsters from the show. There's a certain charm to managing your units, leveling them up, and nurturing them to their fullest potential. The mechanics of this game feel simple to understand, but once you start fine-tuning your monsters to your liking, it becomes incredibly addicting. Then, you get a new monster that you love, and you have to find a way to incorporate it into your team that you already established. Do you stick to what works, or you start experimenting to find an even greater feeling? It's like when you have to pick your favorite child. As a parent, you know who your favorite child is, but you can't say it. So, you end up giving accidental special treatment to them, making sure they're always fed first, never cry, and giving unlimited reign on whatever they want to do. Then you realize that child is extremely overleveled, and you have to decide, do I A, put them on the bench to give your other children a chance to shine since you clearly care so much about them, or B. Dumble down and keep feeding that one kid hoping they pay you back for all your hard work, dedication, and loyalty to the gods! At the end of the day, strategy games is just glamorized chess. Chess with new paint and some fun mechanics to entice players to check it out. Yu-Gi-Oh! has been a part of many people's childhood. It's a shame that the franchise doesn't play around with the idea of spin-off titles. They could easily use the lore of the cards or just the monsters themselves for cool and gimmicky games. Imagine a Yu-Gi-Oh! fighting game. That would be insane! They usually only stick towards the card game. While this may be a relic of the past, I cherish it as what Yu-Gi-Oh! could become outside of just the cards. It has a lot going on and is underrated simply because it's a version of Yu-Gi-Oh! that people don't give a crap about. Luckily, I'm not people, so we're fine! Now that God has granted me this chance to play such a great game, I feel like I can finally play Yu-Gi-Oh! in some form. I gotta say though, this game really takes the cake. Anyone can play the card game, however, taking the concept of monsters and squeezing them into a Fire Emblem-like experience is something else. After everything is said and done, we only have one thing left to do. <laughs> it is I, Yugi, Visa. At long last, I can beat you and claim my rightful throne as King of Games! I have watched everything you've ever done. I know all your tricks, you conniving, cheating bastard! Your days are numbered. And now, it's time to duel!